I'm just curious. Does anybody know the definition of wellness? Now, I know you don't have a pencil and a paper to go and write these definitions down, but if you go to the site later, you'll find out what they are. But I thought I'd introduce this show with these definitions. The dynamic process of becoming aware of, taking responsibility for, and making choices that directly contribute to one's well-being uh, and that of the common good. That's one definition. A second definition is an active process of becoming aware of and making choices toward a healthy and fulfilling life or a state of optimal well-being that is orientated toward maximizing an individual's potential. Now, having that mouthful, which I just gave you, uh, I want to ask you this finally before I get into the meat of this session today. How do you assess your own wellness? I think that's really important because, frankly, that's what living the lifestyle you deserve is all about, assessing your own wellness. Ask yourself these questions. Do you have a positive learning aptitude? Do you eat mostly natural, unprocessed foods whenever possible? Do you seek preventative, natural, alternative, and holistic therapies over chemicals? I see you out there, you know what I'm talking about. Do you ex exercise at least three times per week? And are you making enough time each day to relax, reflect, sleep, and renew yourself? If you answered yes to these questions, congratulations. You are in the top 5% of humankind who practice wellness like a religion. For the rest of you, you have some habits to identify and change. Your wellness, in fact, your life depends on it. I do want to welcome you to the, this edition of Living the Lifestyle You Deserve, dedicated to personal wellness and the human condition. My name is Robert Keller, and I will be your host for the next half hour. Thanks for showing up. Welcome to the show. Now, listen, nutritional wellness is, is central to living the lifestyle you deserve. My very special guest today is a remarkable nutritional wellness professional, and she lives what she trains and coaches. Her name is Marianne McPherson. She is a registered holistic nutritionist health and weight loss coach, boy, she's got a long list of qualifications, NLP practitioner, virtual coach, weight loss coach, NLP practitioner, Reiki master teacher, author and speaker, and she's the founder of her own business, Creating Total Wellness. I don't know where she gets the time to do all this. Mary Ann's vision is to teach and inspire the lives of 10 million people to total wellness. At Living the Lifestyle You Deserve, we associate our services with real people coming from integrity, authenticity, experience, and achievement. I can attest having known Marianne for a while. She is all of that and much, much more. To be brutally frank, Marianne's mission started with herself. She gave me permission to present some of this information because some of it's very personal, so she wants to be real. She wants to share this with you. Challenged by disadvantages from birth, including adoption, physical emotion, and sexual abuse, Eventually being bedridden with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, she knows what it's like to be at the bottom. She came into holistic nutrition out of necessity when 11 doctors and specialists, along with two dietitians, had no solid answers to help her and told her to simply cope with the pain. Yikes. How would you feel with that happen to you? After seeing amazing results in herself, she's continued to, to dive deeply into this industry for herself and for you. Marianne's teaching and coaching is all about mind-body connection and assisting you in living the lifestyle you deserve. Her coaching program tends to attract women, of course, who have tried every diet and read many weight loss books, but nothing ever seems to work. You can relate to that for sure. Marianne's Creating Total Wellness Assignment process highlights the body's toxic toxicities and or deficiencies. Her clients can now create the plan to bring their bodies back to homeostasis or normal optimum function. Like the other members of Living the Lifestyle Deserve professional team, Marianne is eager to share her experience and expertise with you so that you can begin to live the lifestyle you deserve. Today, Marianne will present the four pillars of health. Marianne, welcome to the show. Glad you're here. Thank you so much, Robert. It's a so, pleasure. As we go ahead, let me just introduce what those four pillars of health are. The first one is nutrition, <laughs> very easy for me to say, nourishing your physical body, number two, emotional wellness, three, mental stamina, and finally four, spiritual connection, because weight loss is much more than food and fitness. So you're going to start off, I would guess, with nourishing your physical body, but before you talk to us about that, I have one interesting question to ask you. You're a nutritionist, right? Absolutely. Then tell me, why are you teaching the four pillars of health in the first place? 
Well, I kind of stumbled upon it. I started off as a nutritionist thinking I was going to get into health disorders, and many of the clients that came to me were women who wanted to lose weight. But interestingly enough, many of them had already done many weight loss programs. So is this another program they were going to go home and sabotage because they didn't know which was physical and which were emotional issues. So I went through to become a, a health coach and um, so that I could dive into that and help people figure out the difference between the physical and the emotional issues. I'd always been interested in psychology and the power of the mind and how that how people tick. And so that was an easy thing that I fell into with coaching clients all the time with that. And spiritually, well, we're all spiritual beings. <laughs> and so it's like that four legged stool. If yes. you know, if we're gonna have stability, we need all of that. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so thanks for the overview on that. Now I'm a little clearer. Now Tell us a little bit about nutrition, nourishing your physical body as the first pillar. Tell us more about that. Yes, well, most people are looking for energy. A lot of people are stressed. The stats are about 90% of people go to their physician, and a lot of times it's stress issues. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about food and calories, etc. You know, we look at the five different, I look at the five different components, right? For physical health, we need to nourish our body physically with foods that serve our body and drinks that serve our body. So, so, so nourishing your body first with food. With food. Okay. Also with purified water. Purified water. Can you tell me, what, what do you mean by purified water? There's all sorts of people that got water all over the place. I know. Okay. What, what do you mean by, <laughs> because I think it's really important because the yes. listener, the viewers are, you know, they go into stores, they see all sorts of water in bottles. Are you talking about yeah. the bottled water? in the stores? I'm or? not. Okay, I'm, what I'm not. Uh, well, okay. actually, I have at home a, an alkaline system, and okay. so it takes all the impurities out and leaves all the good stuff in. Is that reverse osmosis system? It's, it's not. It's, it's not. an alkaline water system. Okay. Reverse osmosis is my second favorite. I studied that for years because every time I teach a seminar, that question okay. always comes up. Now, the reverse osmosis is acidic, <coughs> I think, is it not? Yes, yeah, so body? you have to add the minerals uh, back in. Okay, so to yes. neutralize it, sort of? Uh, well, to put the minerals back in oh, okay. so that you actually have the minerals still. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Now, the third component is exercise, which you touched on. Um, and so that is highly important, and we seem to have an issue with sitting too much in our society. Uh, fourth is nutritional supplements. It's amazing that we really are not getting enough nutrients from our food, and we need to top that up. And then the fifth one, of course, is sleep. And we really need our sleep, and we seem to have a huge deficit of that as well. Now, I want to ask you about these nutritional supplements, because i got to tell you, that drives me crazy. Uh, I, I've got a multi-level marketing company. I'm not going to mention their name, because when I'm selling them. Um, uh, but, but some what, what a nutritional supplement, supplement that's natural, I mean, I think that's a big issue because like, I, I got to believe, and I, you're the professional, I'm not, I'm just asking the question because I think this is a great form to do this. If I go to a grocery store uh, and, and I go to the section that's got all these different vitamins, and I won't even name those either, but I mean, is, is that what I call pure? Uh, I would never buy really? supplements from a grocery store. Um, I personally buy them from professional companies or network marketing. I just work with two professional companies. I do a lot with homeopathy, actually. Do you? Yes. What is that? What's homeopathy for those people who are just viewing this for the first time? Oh, what do you okay. Mean by that? It is actually the essence of what your body needs, okay. and it's done usually in an alco al alcoholic base, but you only do like five drops two or three times a day, six days wow. on, one day off, and um, it's, it's just a great way to balance your body. And so you can even get, you know, homeopathic preparations for hormones and for balancing the organs along with the emotional issues along with the meridian formulas. Now, so. you know, that, <coughs> it, it, that, I guess that's a little more expensive to buy those pure uh, supplements than just simply going to the grocery store, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. But if you buy something that's synthetic, your body might have to work harder to process it out mm -hmm. because it has fillers and excipients and it has not real things, and your body recognizes that. That's the word so. of the day, excipients. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Don't let me Yeah, stop. so, yeah, okay. you know, if your body has to work hard to get rid of yes. all of the stuff that's in there, that you've really not gotten any benefits. I'd rather somebody took one good quality supplement mm -hmm. and utilized it properly for your body than tried to get on a few different things and it's not giving them the benefit, you know, of what they need. Now, when you first started out, I'm going to presume that you had to go and test and try all sorts of different things to see they work for your body? Yeah, you know, I was bedridden for about a year and a half, two years, and it was herbal supplements that got me out of bed. Okay. 
<laughs> and on with my life. And then I realized that a lot had to do with food. And so that's when I, you know, became a nutritionist. I did a lot of trial and error with supplements for sure. But then I did a lot of trial and, er and error with food as well. And I noticed I have three children. When they were little, sometimes we go, oh, let's have a treat tonight, <laughs> right? Let's yeah. And I start noticing that a lot of the treats were crap. That was my terminology, it was crap. So almost right, 20 years crap. ago, <laughs> I came up and I designed a seminar called Cutting the Crap. And so, you know, that stands for um, uh, carbonation and uh, caffeine, refined foods, alcohol and aspartame, and processed foods. Wow. And I do a whole seminar on that. If we can learn to get rid of that and then put in the healthy food, the whole foods, right? And learn, I always say this is my motto, if nature made it and man didn't mess with it, we're off to a good start. Yeah, <laughs> that's very good. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not the whole piece, but I'll tell you, it, it does a lot. Because here's the thing. Women come to me, they want to lose weight. I start doing the paperwork, and we start talking, and I find they're stressed to the max. They're taking care of the rest of the world and not themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't have time to eat healthy. They don't have time to cook healthily for their children. Mm -hmm. They're not getting enough sleep. They don't have time for fitness. It's like, are you kidding? They just run from morning till night. Yeah. And you know, most of them, a lot of them have adrenal fatigue and hormone issues. Wow. And so if I can go to the root of the problem, then that's where I need to start. Now, I, I read something. Can, can I, it's okay if I quote something from your book here? Absolutely. See, the, the win, win, winning at wellness, four essential steps to create your healthiest life now. That's Marianne's new book. And, and I was reading through here on hormone connection. It's okay if I read a, a little section, a couple sections okay. from here, mm -hmm. and maybe you can identify, because I was very curious about this, okay? Uh, hormones are the chemicals in our body that control complex bodily functions, like metabolism, growth, and development, sexual abilities, reproduction, and behavior. That's the first thing that, that I read. And the second one that I thought was also intriguing, and it's sort of, I'm sort of augmenting some of the things you're saying, and I'm asking you afterwards to sort of give me a little broader picture of what this is. Hormones can affect your mood, weight, bowel movements, I had no idea, sexual prowess, etc. If you're suffering from fatigue, weight increase, hot flashes, sleeplessness, excessive sleep, PMS, that's not me, I don't do that, infertility and or skin diseases, chances are that hormonal imbalances are behind it. With insufficient hormones, our body can suffer from both physical and mental illness. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Having said that, several of the above mentioned health problems could also be caused by other factors, such as blood sugar fluctuations many times, it's both. Now just before we go to break, maybe you can give me, enlighten me a little bit on what, I, what, what the hormones are all about. Yeah, we need to have a balance between estrogen, progesterone, and women even need a little bit of testosterone. And so because we get so much estrogen dominance through, you know, makeup and plastics and, and pesticides and hormones in the meat, it tips the balance and it throws things off. And then we end up with all of these issues. So, you know, we really need to start taking care of that from a holistic standpoint, for sure. Wow. Well, you're, you've got a real wealth of information here, and I am very excited that you're joining us on the show, Marianne McPherson, and, and she is uh, a nutritionist, apart from many other things that she does. She's quite amazing. Now, guys, we're going to go and take a break. When we come back, we're going to go into something, I guess, emotional wellness. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do, okay? Uh, so uh, this time, get a pencil and paper because you want to take some of this information down. So Marianne McPherson today, Living the Lifestyle Deserve. Now, just, just to tell you, her accreditation is enormous. On the website, Marianne, uh, can, you, you've got a lot of information on the website that people can come and learn about this thing. They can learn about her hormones and all these other things, nourishing your physical body. Everything we're talking about today, Look at, we're gonna get out now. Come, in, come back after the break. Thanks for showing up. It's Robert here.
Okay, welcome back, everyone, to Living the Life You Deserve. Today, I've got a very special treat for you here. I'm inter interviewing a wonderful lady, real professional. Her name is Marianne McPherson, registered holistic nutritionist, as well as many other things. And she's talking to us today about the four pillars of health. And in the second half, she's going to talk to us about emotional wellness, mental stamina, and spiritual connection, because weight loss is much more than food and fitness. Marianne, welcome back. Take it away. Emotional wellness for us all. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Yes, you know what? We can say it's all about physical health, and yet it's really emotions that drive our life. And where did we learn what's acceptable, what's not? A lot of times, you know, through our youth. And much as parents are loving, a lot of times it might be, you know, don't cry, you know, or here, have a cookie, don't cry, <laughs> right? There's a lot of women I deal with with that, right? You know, and so, or, you know, you know, if you think you have something to cry, cry about, I'll give you something to cry about, right? Ouch. Don't be a sissy. Yeah. You know, they're, you know, good girls, da, 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 they do, they're people pleasers, do what other people ask them to do. So a lot of times we learn to stuff our feelings. So is it what we're eating or what's eating us? Interesting. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, to delve into physical health without getting into the emotional piece, you know, for me, does a disservice because I like to dig in there and find out exactly what's holding them back. <clears throat> if they're stress and comfort eating, which is my terminology, you know, when we're stressed, right, cortisol goes up, the happy hormone serotonin goes down, and the next thing you know, the wisdom of the body says, I need, I need to have instant sugar. Nobody craves broccoli. So, right, <laughs> you know, yeah, so then yeah, they're, yeah. they're eating something that's usually something that's not on their list, and then they feel bad for it. But really, you know, it's the blood sugar issue, it's the cortisol, you know, and then the extra fat comes on around the belly, and, and then they're feeling bad about themselves, and then the whole cycle continues. So when it comes to emotions, I always say, you know, is the cup half empty or half full? Yes. Because you've got the range of emotions at the bottom half, which is, you know, the sadness and the depression and the shame and, you know, the, the fear, and then at the top, half right there's empowerment and love and freedom and all of those happy emotions. You want emotions. to stay on the top half right? Well and if people have emotions from their childhood that's buried in there it needs to come up and out wow. so we need a safe place to do that and then once they're gone then you can move up to the top because people want to be happy they want to live in the top half so, of the so class. So they want to release is what you're saying? Is Absolutely. That right? yes, okay. Yeah but you know a lot of yeah. times they don't even know that that's part of the issue right and then we can say well but what started an emotion? A thought. Yes. Right, you know, and so I feel fear, and the next thing you know, like, you know, not only number one is my emotional state going down, what am I going to gravitate to for food if I'm emotionally stressed, yes. right? Versus I'm feeling really empowered and happy, it's easier for me to stay on track and have the good, healthy food, right? And then the brain chemistry and everything helps to, to drive that along as well. So you really are teaching people how to live the lifestyle they deserve. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And great. then I want to say, yeah. I listen to people's self-talk. And then people go, oh, my God, I'm so stupid. I can't believe that uh, I'm sick and tired. I'm never going to get caught up with my work. Right? And so those are things that are disempowering. And when we even look at our, our energy, we have our, our bubble of energy, right? When we have a positive, empowering thought, our energy field expands. And when we're having the low vibrational stress thoughts, then our, um, our energy field will contract. Right? And so it's like, where do you want to be? And what are you going to attract when you're feeling stressed and saying, I am stressed, I am never going to get caught up. We're just going to attract more of the same. And so, you know, part of the coaching is getting people to understand power of the spoken word because the thoughts will create the emotions which will help create the physical and create our life. With this kind of coaching, it, it sounds very complicated, I don't mind saying. Okay. okay? It sounds complicated. It sounds almost technical. Well, I shouldn't. Of course uh, it's technical yes to some no. degree. Yes. But how, how easy, now, how easy it for, is it for people to, to start learning about the emotional wellness and have, put it in check to control it, to understand it, I guess, first and then release, right? How easy, it, how long does something like that take? I guess that's a, that's a crazy question to ask you, but people would be asking that. I say, I like what she's saying, but how, right. what do I have to do? Where does it start? Well, when I wor work with clients, first thing yeah. I do is we do the physical because how much of the physical is, you know, contingent on the emotional. Yeah. So when people have blood sugar issues and they're swinging their blood sugars, 
because you know they're having maybe a muffin and coffee for breakfast and your blood sugars if they're stable are <laughs> here yeah. right and then yeah. they're up here and then an hour later they're at the coffee pot going oh my goodness I need something else and then they're craving more carbs it's yo yoing that's a physical yeah. thing and yet emotionally they might end up with you know feeling mood swings depression etc cetera, etc cetera, mm. right same with when hormones are imbalanced right that will create food cravings it will create fatigue there's even studies that said there, there's a connection to post-traumatic stress disorder sleep apnea allergies wow. because hormones are imbalanced yes. so take care of the physical first once we start doing that and they've got a food program going then it's easy to just gently move into the other one but sessions will still be we work on the emotional stuff we still backtrack back to the physical wherever we need to and, and, and everyone is a separate commodity they're separate in other words there's no such a thing as all size fix all, all, all sizes fit one person eh? not at all yeah, I yeah. have twins and they even have separate wow. needs right okay. everybody is biochemically unique well, okay, so I get the, I get the emotional wellness part of it. Um, it. Can we move to the next one? Sure. Okay, so the next one is mental stamina. Well, and that, that's okay. what I meant by, by okay. uh, the I am and the thought processes, okay. right? It's the computer okay. that's, <laughs> that's sort of driving the bus as well because you have the thought before you have the emotion. And so if I'm thinking positive, happy thoughts, my energy field expands, I will continue to have more and I will be thinking my way to success, to health, etc. When people go, yeah, it's, you know, I, this is never going to work. Mm. Their, you know, their mental process is actually sabotaging them before they even start. And then it's like, well, then this can't work. The first thing we have to do is get yourself, get yourself believing that what you're doing, you know, is going to work. To literally get into meditation. So let's let's get into the spiritual part of this. You know, exactly. spiritual connection is realistically, I mean, it could be religion, but it's not necessarily. Whether whether people pray to God, Allah, Buddha, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It could be nature. It could be source energy. And, you know, but we need to have a connection outside of ourself that's greater than us so that we know that, you know, we are connected. I'll, I always say like, okay, so it's like divine energy is like an ocean. Yes. And we are drops of the ocean. And so we're separate and yet we're totally connected. And so, you know, if we pray, it's like we're talking to that nature. And then when we're meditating, we're kind of listening. But then within that, it's like, you know, you go in and you go, okay, so what do I need to do for my body today? Mm. You know, where's my emotional state today? Where's my mental clarity today? What do I need to do about it if it's not there? Am I emotionally, am I spiritually feeling connected? No, I'm feeling kind of lost. Well, so if I am, what do I need? Do I need to walk in nature? Do I need to connect with a friend? It's learning more about who you are and what are your hopes, dreams, desires, and goals, and how are you then going to get there? And a lot of that is the, the mental stamina, right? It's, it's the computer that says, okay, how do I want to program things? We've got the synapses in the brain, and they're like little tree trunks. Yes. And so, you know, the more I think a new thought that's empowering, then the old disempowering one starts to diminish and finally goes away. And then the, the healthy one will get stronger and bigger. And then that's why they say after about 30 days, right? You know, that's all it takes to form a new habit. To change the habit, yes. To change the habit. Yes. So I don't want to just change the habit and say, well, let's focus on having these foods. It's also, let's focus on these thoughts. You've got emotional issues with this. Why don't we do some theta, some spiritual, you know, work, and clear all of that so that that's not getting in the way anymore. Okay. And then that makes it easier for people to follow the program. Now, the thing that I, you know, I've known you for quite quite a while, yeah. And I, I certainly respect your work Thank because you. there's few people, and the reason why I do more than anything else is an awful lot of people who are very technical and they actually haven't done this themselves. And I am okay. pretty much aware that, you, you know, everything you're talking about today on the show are things that you are intimately involved with, intimately. On a daily basis. On a daily basis. And, and I mean, how does that feel? I mean, this, this is a regimen that's, um, I mean, you're, you're having to dedicate your life and your time to continue to do this. And I would guess that you're going to do this for the rest of your life. I don't have to. I choose to. But you choose Why to. would I want to uh, live so any other different. way, right? Yeah, yeah okay. Right? okay. You know, it's like, okay, yeah. what is your routine and what works for you? Yes. This is my routine. This got me out of bed with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, sleep apnea. I mean, it's just, it's, it's given me life. It enabled me to raise my children. 
which I would not have been able to do. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to help other people, and especially women, I get male clients and sometimes teens, for the most part it's women. What a gift for them to be able to release themselves from whatever burdens they had from childhood. I mean, if we look at even sexual abuse, one woman in three by the time they're 18, guys, one guy in five, by the time women are 50, 90% have had some kind of sexual misconduct. So when we take a look at that, it's like, are we stuffing it? Are we burying it? I was really good at doing that. I thought till Pandora's box opened and mm -hmm. then no, no more, right? And so I believe I came to the earth plane to actually do this and, and to get through it and to be able to help other people with it. And it's really interesting because you know that I, I read auras and, and I, we've talked yes. several times where I can identify some things that are difficult for some people. I mean, when you ask them a question, yeah. you can see the change in the aura. And, yeah. and I think it's sort of like an innate, uh, it's, it's innate with you. you. You can pick this up very quickly, too, because of the numbers of years you have worked with different folks. And yeah. is, 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 you know, I, I, we, I, I just want to mention one thing for sure with you before we, you know, get to the end of the show. But one of the things I think is really important is I'm sure that everyone who's watching this now especially the women, because really you're spending more time with the women than the men. You, you won't yes. say no to men, but you're saying everything to the women. Uh, women have a very difficult time. I mean, to, to me, um, you know, I believe in women's equality and all this other stuff, so that's probably one of the reasons why we're good friends. <laughs> we were here now, I didn't think that. But, but, uh, but really, uh, there's a lot of women out there who do carry this baggage for, uh, forever, it seems. Yeah. And, and it's almost a sad thing because, I mean, some of the clients I have, too, where they're afraid to admit that there is an issue. And like you say, they yeah. bury the thing. Is, is that probably one of the first yeah. places to start with these folks? To I get always, them to I at always, least acknowledge that something is there? Uh, I still always start with the physical. You still do it? Because I don't know how much of it is physical. Let's take care of that first. Okay. And then we dive into whatever they're ready to take care of. Right. Some people want to go into spirituality. Some people go, I'm fine. I've got this religion. It's going great for me. Let's just work on this other stuff. And some people don't realize it's an issue, and I'll tiptoe into it, or I might just come out with it full force and go, is this something you want to work on? Hmm. Absolutely. You know, and then I want to say, you know, if, if you were raised in abuse, sometimes you marry what you know, <laughs> right? That's not, that's you know, true. you yes, marry your parents. And, yeah. and so then it's like, okay, are you stuck in a toxic relationship? You know, it's not for me to judge that, but what friends and what people are you hanging out with, you know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we talked about the four pillars of health. We're going to wind it up very quickly in, in a second, but I just want to summarize them one more time. So you've got, the first one is nourishing your physical body. Yes. Second one is emotional wellness. Third one is mental stamina. Uh -huh. And then finally, spiritual connection. And all of this information, if people want to learn more about that, that's on our, our existing site. Uh, and you can go and check this out. Anything you want to know about Mary Ann, she's there. Uh, if you want to jump on the site and check the stuff out, in the next coming days, there'll be plenty of things. So, folks, thanks for showing up. Living the lifestyle I deserve. Robert Keller, glad you showed up. See you next time.